Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How is everyone? You can use the chat boxes as much as you can to respond. Inshallah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlu l'uqdatan min lisani yafahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbi yasir wa latu asir wa tamibu khair. Allahumma alhimna rujdana wa a'idhna min shururi anfusina. I'm sure girls are excited for this topic because uh, there are so many things related to the topic that we are usually uh, doubtful about, not clear about, many queries, and uh, even received questions. So inshallah, ta'ala, I hope uh, we would be able to cover the topic as much as we can, although uh, every part of this uh, topic is very important and needs a lot of elaboration. And um, we might be covering some aspects and then there might be some questions that come in our minds, you know. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, it is a quite elaborate topic uh, when we talk about marriage and Islam. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll try to start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah ta'ala. So dear, dear girls, um, could anyone define what is a family? What do, what do you consider as a family? Anyone? You can write it down. What is a family? Okay, anyone? What do you consider as a family? So basically it's a, a few a number of people living under the same roof. Okay, it's a foundation of the society. Yes, that's fine, that's good, that's a good answer. Uh, but it just for people who are related to each other. Yes, that's another, another thing. A bunch of people related to each other, yes, living together, exactly. So, subhanAllah, you all of all of you have got to the gist of it, uh, what a family is. So, when we talk about family, it is a group of individuals who, who live under one roof, uh, usually under one head or household. And um, it is the basic unit of a society. So, you know, when we talk of the whole society and we talk of the whole human race and human mankind, everyone. Uh, so this is the most basic unit, which usually consists of the parents and then the kids. So, subhanAllah, uh, for the, for, to begin a family and for a basic unit of a family to come into place, uh, the most important thing is marriage. If we talk in, in the more... Uh, uh, contemporary uh, definition. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now, now, since we understood that this is the basic unit of, of humankind, of human race, where you have parents, where you have children, uh, this is what a family is all about. Now, my next question is, uh, what do you consider uh, as marriage? What is marriage? What is marriage? Because our topic is marriage in Islam. So before we come to marriage in Islam, obviously we should have a clear picture of what marriage itself is. Yes, girls. Okay. Uh, see, marriage basically, uh, if we talk about general marriage, if we look at the definition of marriage. It is a legally or a formally recognized uh, relationship. It's a reunion between a man or a woman, okay? But uh, if you talk in the uh, modern uh, legal uh, jurisdiction, we will find that it even is between the same gender. So, you know, a man can get married to a man and a woman can get married to a woman. Uh, that is what marriage is now considered to be. Yes, okay. So Sabah says, when two people get together for the sake of Allah, okay. Uh, so now we come to the definition, what is marriage in Islam? So I just gave you the definition of marriage, just a, a common definition, which could apply to anyone and anywhere. So that is the legally uh, recognition, rec recognizing the, the union of a man and a woman. So if it's legally recognized somewhere and you sign a contract somewhere and, and just you go to a, a court or whatever it is or whatever ritual that takes place between any religion for a man and a woman to get married. And, and now it, it, it is not restricted only to a man and a woman, but a man can get married to a man and a woman can get married to a woman in, in, in numerous countries of the world and uh, many states of 
the modern world so uh, subhanallah that is what marriage is now defined as but when we look at marriage in islam it is considered as a sacred union between a man and a woman so it's not just kind any kind of a union but it is considered very sacred because it is an it is a religious obligation that a, that one person fulfills so subhanallah um with all the love and which with all the things that come along with marriage subhanallah islam has uh, uh, islam uh, dictates that marriage in islam is basically an obligation and a religious obligation which a person fulfills uh, we know from a uh, ayat of the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and amongst his signs is that he created you uh, he created for you spouses for yourself so that you may find sukoon you know the the tranquility and peace with them, within them and then he says he has placed between you affection and mercy so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us spouses uh, with which we, we can settle with them we can have peace with them and also then what does he do he play he has placed between you affection and mercy and uh, subhanallah allah, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in in this there are certainly signs for people who reflect so subhanallah this is the concept of islam where uh, in uh, uh, regarding marriage that it is considered as a sacred reunion now uh, when we uh, go ahead and and also um, uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has uh spoke spoken about this and he says that if man completes half of his deen like you know 50% of his religion when he gets married so subhanallah that is such beautiful thing that marriage has made been made such a pure thing that it completes a, a, the the 50% of a man's deen and then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam continues so a, a man should uh, take care of the other half you know you have to be uh you have to be very cautious about the other half because you have already completed the half of your deen by getting married so subhanallah this is such a beautiful thing uh getting married and and being in a reunion of uh, uh, which is very legal in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala and the, in the eyes of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and according to the uh, quran uh another thing that marriage in islam when we talk about the concept of marriage in islam what does it do what 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 are the benefits of it so when we talk about the benefits the major and first benefit is that you are actually uh, applying the law of allah subhanahu wa taala we are actu- actually actually uh, following the sunna of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, we are following what he has told us so um, uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the hadith which we get uh, there is a narration which uh, which is with the similar words that uh, whenever A, ch- a child reaches the age of puberty and and you know is mature enough uh, they must get married so this is what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us and uh, and then when we look at uh, the various sahaba and sahabiyat and the stories rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and islam encourages people to get married this is something which has been encouraged because this is the basic of a human human race you know a, you a person cannot basically live alone needs a partner that is the reason why we look at, look uh, around the world even if you are married or not married uh, it is a natural inclination that has been put in our hearts the love that is there that has been put there but islam uh, when we had done the chapter uh, the topic of gender interaction we have we have uh, spoken about it isn't it so this is the best way a person can uh, interact with the opposite gender fulfill his desires and uh, and then another uh, purpose of marriage is uh, to continue on the generations that we have you know so subhanallah um, this is another thing that is very natural and that happens that you know once once when once a man and a woman get get married uh, allah subhanahu wa taala puts love in them and then uh, the purpose is to procreate to have more of the same human kind inshallah taala so this is also one purpose of uh, marriage and uh, a major benefit of uh, marriage anika is that it protects one from sins it protects one person from looking at uh, wrong things to have wrong relationships to have uh, illegal uh, uh, kind of uh, dialogues with people 
so it it kinds of protects a person once you are committed in a relationship once you are married now allah subhanahu wa taala uh, gives you a f- point of focus the man has has his wife to enjoy and the woman has his husband to enjoy and then they 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 walk the uh, the life uh, the journey of life uh, with new adventures with new with learning step by step trying to be mature day by day and taking the experiences of the life and then pass it on so this is uh, the basic if you talk about the uh, marriage in islam now when we come to the point that uh, has has uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the quran given us any guidelines to uh, who as a partner should we choose or, or what should a person consider while getting married so there are very various, various hadith regarding this and uh, if we look at uh, one of the major hadith which which uh, which is available on this uh, topic uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, a person marries for basically four reasons and four reasons have been told by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are four reasons for which people get married uh, one is beauty the second is uh, his um the status in the society or, or the the status that they have in the society and then it is the family and money okay so these are the reasons uh, for which a person is uh, married to and then he says another one is deen and rasulullah sallam said that you prefer deen over all of these beauty money the st- status family status that is there and then deen so what ha- what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us is to prefer deen over all of this this does not mean that you do not look at the beauty this does not mean that you look, don't look at the family status or the status that they have in the society you, this does not mean that you do not look if they they are uh, well enough uh, paid so that they can uh, you know uh, take care of the family all of this is that you you obviously look at these things but what is more important is the deen uh why is it so why is it so why is it so that we uh, deen is uh, necessary any answers okay so for example somebody gets married to a, a girl because she is very beautiful and uh, the boy you know or, or a girl finds a boy who is very handsome and gets married only because she or he is very appealing to the eyes what would happen after like 10 20 30 years yes mahak says that everything else is temporary it's a very good beautiful, beautiful answer which almost sums up everything so if you if you getting married for the beauty uh, of the person uh, somebody is really handsome like the latest hero which you know and which you like and you see her style or aisa hai or aisa hai all of these things and then what happens once age comes and you know person becomes a, 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 um, a few more years older the beauty is gone and now that was the only sole purpose it will fade away yes exactly and what about money so so maybe the person is really highly paid somewhere and the next the next moment uh, he could be fired from his job and then what would happen and then then and that is the reason why so many marriages had failed during the recession that happened uh, in the financial crisis that happened a few years back in the western countries this is what happened families were breaking only because they were not financially stable and and if you uh, you know all of these are things are temporary and and uh, yes uh, one reason uh, that that one somebody has written uh, for choosing taqwa or deen over all of these things is because you have your next generations who who would have the best uh, upbringing obviously 
so subhanallah these are the reasons that that you know we we should look and i'll i'll give i'll explain this with an example so for example when you uh, when you think of somebody to get married to uh, take a piece of paper and uh, write down some numbers okay so what you do is uh, you give a one if the person has been so you know you you find the person is is religious and you know the the, the the definition of religious is again it varies from person to person somebody might think oh he prays five times a day that's like deen subhanallah rasulullah uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam from another hadith we get to know he says that if you find if somebody sends you a proposal who has deen and akhlaq good good manners good character so you do not reject it and you should accept it okay so subhanallah it means that deen is just not uh, praying five times a day it is that plus you have a good character okay so subhanallah uh, so if somebody if you find somebody who has deen at least from our perspective uh, uh, from what we know uh, you give one okay that that would be your one and then you keep on adding zeros so if you find uh, the person is very handsome you put a zero so it becomes now now how much is the figure now it was one now how much is it now 10 yes exactly and then the person is very highly paid and, and lives in a very big villa so you put one zero again now how much it is 100 okay so now he is of the he has money he has a beauty and now he he also belongs to a very uh, well reputed family so put one more zero thousand okay so you can keep on adding and adding and adding but what would happen if one wasn't there what if if there is not a single if there's not the first digit there what would happen how many even if you would have hundred of zeros would it matter would it would it reach to any value hundred zeros no subhanallah so this is how you can just yes exactly it won't have any value and and and, and a person who Uh, who respects uh, uh, the the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who has love for allah subhanahu wa taala who who gives the right of allah subhanahu wa taala will only give the right to the to the woman you know you know you can expect more of a person who fears allah subhanahu wa taala will surely fear in giving your rights also right so this is this is how and you know what happens another thing see when we talk about marriage what happens when you when a boy or a girl thinks of marriage now since we have been bombarded from uh, every angle of social media so somebody gets married you know what do they do they post their photos of their very uh, beautiful mehdi ka haldi ka program and then their nikah and their walima and they're holding hands and they win ring photos right all of these we see huh and that's a perfect picture that we have but does anyone know what happens after that so subhanallah uh, we are just aiming for the best of the best and you know the the actually the uh, world that we are looking at is actually all fancy and it it is not all the truth and just realize that there are hurdles there are challenges always 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 in marriage so you know um, I, even after getting married it is not that everything is just normal but when you are a person of faith and when the person you are getting married is a person of faith what would happen you would surely compromise on the things that you are not achieving here so for example you know there would be a job uh, loss your your uh, the husband gets uh, uh, fired from the job but the woman, the wife knows that everything is a decree from allah subhanahu wa taala and she would manage there there might be something that happens to the woman to the beauty of the woman or some accident happens or whatever happens or maybe there is some other problem with the with the woman but the man no will compromise because he knows that this is not the end of the world for a mu'min what is the end of the world actually there is nothing you just die from here and go to the next life and there are things that that we will gain in the next life and the focus of the man and the woman is where they want to go to jannah both of them want to go to janna and they are riding a car which is directed towards janna and there might be speed breakers there might be humps there might be signals things coming in the way but what will happen ultimately their focus is janna so you know it's okay once in a while you might the, 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 people might argue in the car on the travel it's fine but the life continues 
so uh, first of all we all must realize that this world is not a place to fulfill everything that i want everything and anything that i have a desire for in my heart this is not the place to fulfill it there is a place that allah subhanahu wa taala created for all of us and that is the only place so you know if you are looking of for perfection please forget it you would never find a perfect husband and a husband cannot find a perfect wife and that is the reason why marriages are breaking now because all because before marriage is perfect you know the, the roses and the flowers and the rings and the things and the gifts and after marriage because you had we uh, it was our own uh, expectation our own false expectations which is not uh desired we, we we need not have expectations such high nobody has a perfect marriage go just go ask your parents or go and ask anyone who is married subhanallah so uh, we know we all of us know that you know things happen and thing will happen but but if you are focusing on akhirah if you believe in allah subhanahu wa taala you know that this world is not permanent so things might happen and go inshallah so this is uh, something that we need to focus upon Uh, so now talking about um, wh- who we should aim for um, in in a marriage as i said as rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has guided us that a person who who has deen and taqwa and also has good character and what has been said that if you receive a proposal from a person who is of uh, who who is of deen and has a good character do not reject it so this is another thing that we we need not reject uh we might not find you know so if you sit with a paper and pencil and you start to analyze things any any proposals that that come your way uh so you find ki acha uh isme is point par acha hai and is point par nahi acha and that this point is fine and the other point is not fine just assess it just see and you know you will never have 100 out of 100 but we have to look at these terms so if if the person has deen and is of a good character might be might be you you might have to compromise somewhere else it's fine well and good but what is happening nowadays what what is the reality that is happening aaj rishte kis buniyad par liye dhoonde jate hain girls uh, you know when, when uh, boys want to get married to girls what happens what what are they searching for looks beauty hai na bas beauty and uh, what happens wo ladke ko to itni parwa nahi hogi aur ladke ki amma ko zyada rehti phir wo tension agree so subhanallah beauty is prioritized yes people do not care about anything khoobsurat bahu milke that's more than enough you know so my wife is very beautiful that's it subhanallah that is that is not a standard that we muslims should go behind now now since we are the women kind we can very agree to this yeah but then when your brother is getting married or somebody in your family is getting getting married it is our test to see that are we searching for beauty or are we searching for um, pure genuine uh, akhlaq so if if you know if the girl is of a good character that's more than enough that's the best so we need to or the parents parents need to raise kids in a way that they look at the core values yes <laughs> tall girl without spectacles exactly and that's the reason why girls start getting lenses before marriage so subhanallah all of these things are there uh, but when you look at the inner beauty and when people start um, you know the, there are families who when when they do not look into these things and that that is where they find peace and happiness in their family there is the, the, those are the places where allah subhanahu wa taala pours his mercy upon the people and you know and love is something uh, can, can somebody see love like you know is it a physical tangible thing no okay and, and so so it is something which is in our hearts isn't it and what has allah subhanahu wa taala told about hearts uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the heart of a, of a person is between the two fingers of allah subhanahu wa taala you know so if you look at the two fingers so just to change uh, to to uh, turn something with your two fingers it means it's quite easy like you can turn the pages of a book with two fingers isn't it obviously you can't uh, uh, turn a key that's even harder but something to do with two fingers means it's very easy so what the hadith says is that the heart of a person is between the two fingers of allah subhanahu wa taala he turns it he turns it as he wills 
So subhanallah, putting the love of somebody and, and the ayah that I had recited before, uh, what, what does it say? That he has created you in pairs and he puts love and mercy in your hearts. Obviously, that is just by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, and then uh, a person who you have not even met before in your life, or maybe you have met, but then you don't know the person. How come you haven't been with the person for 20 years? We have been, we don't get along with our brother sisters who, who we have lived with for 15 years. But then a new person from a different house, from a different background, how does it happen that uh, people tend to live with each other forever? Like until they die. Who has put this love? It is just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who puts this love. So subhanallah, and, and this brings to the next question where people say, we need to have an understanding before we get married. Have you heard the statement? And you know, unless and until you do not know the person, then how could you live with the person? Yeah. <laughs> so every, you, these are the common statements that you hear. And and, and if, uh, if I just, what I have said, um, so even if you know a person very well, I'll tell you one thing. Even if you, you think that you know the person very well, the day you get married is the actual true self that you get to see. Before marriage is not the true self. And after marriage is what actually you get to know. You know, then the commitments, the commits, commitments come. Then the hard work comes. Then the small naggings and things happen. And then your actual true self and how you behave with the person, that comes up. So even if the boy and the girl, they, they kind, kind of um, try to have a relationship and know each other and jaan lenge, but it's just uh, roses and flowers and valentines, that's it. That All of these things are happening before and the boy is very sweet and the girl is very sweet. But then when you come into the marriage and you have to get up in the morning and make breakfast, that's the problem then. So, so let me tell you uh, all of this uh, idea of knowing each other before marriage um, is of no use. It is actually of no use. And, and uh, it, is, it is like trying. <laughs> so for example, there is a dress uh, which is uh, half stitched. Okay, So you have gone to... Uh, tailor and you have given your dress to stitch and uh, maybe it's it's a big gown okay and it's half stitch it's not even ready to wear and you and then you say no no it's fine i'll just try the, i'll just wear this and i'll go out do you do that something which is half, half stitched no okay what do you wait for what do you wait for full yes exactly you want it to be fully ready only then you take it and then you wear it isn't it so having such a relationship and having a, a friendship with somebody which you really do not know whether it will end up in the full dress that you are going to wear. You don't even know that, that, that it would reach. And you know, uh, this thing is actually harming people. I'll, I'll let you know um, what is happening around the world. When, when a, a boy and a girl kind of get into a relationship, Okay, and, and it goes very gradual. It's not just something which, which is very consciously done. It is all based on emotions. So you, you kind of like a person. And how does, how does it start? It, would, it, it might be a salam, and that salam goes to a smiley, and the smiley goes to other emojis, and then it just continues. It could be a, a kind of conversation that is done uh, physically, or it could be cyber chatting also. Okay, so it could be a, a cyber relationship, or it could be something which is physical. And a person is trying out things that, oh, let's see whether it works. You know, this does, this does not happen in marriage. You have to, you, you can't try things. And once what happens, you try and you feel that it And the boy feels that it was not And then they try another one. And then they, then, then they feel there also. You know, this is not the perfect for person for me. Because you are trying out things, right? Like, like you have 10 cakes in front of you and you try to eat each this flavor or the other flavor or the other flavor, what would happen? You're just trying out things and after three or four tries, what happens is the person starts doubting himself or herself. Ki, you know, there, there might be something wrong with me that I, I'm not able to find the per perfect person. Are meri those jo thi, she got married like two years back and I'm still searching for the per perfect person. And then you start doubting yourself and you start doubting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, although you might have rejected a, a, a person 
who was not 100% but was 70% you could have spent the rest of your life and maybe that 70% would have become 100% who knows who knows by uh, me getting married to the person that person would have become 100 isn't it so there is something called as trusting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we all being muslimas we all being uh, from a muslim background we know that we trust allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are things that i don't know and there are things that you do not know and which allah knows only and that is what is that that who is better for me in uh, i do not know whether I, whether so and so person so i surely ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance we we are allowed to take um, advice from the elders from the other people from people who know those people that's it that's enough that's enough you know if if this was the case uh, just go and ask your parents or their parents you know your grandmothers and grandfathers how how could they have spent such a big life with love and obviously those small fights also all of these things but this they, they were stuck together they were there they stood together isn't it although they might have not have the, had those relationships prior to marriage so uh, again that concept of having uh, relationships before marriage and then trying to understand you will never understand all the understanding comes only after marriage so uh, this is um, another thing and uh, i would uh, since we cannot cover all the points i would just come to one point one important point it is that um, in the world today our society is pushing us to delayed marriages whereas rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that uh, when a child when your child uh, hits the age of puberty get them married and if you do not do so there would be fitna in this world which for which you would try to have solutions to but you will not be able to find solutions to this is these are not the, not the exact wordings this is the understanding of the hadith so there, there would be fitna there would be uh, such fitna in this world that you would find try to find solutions you won't find solutions for that now um, early marriage when we talk about early marriage okay so what has been instructed to us is to have marriages in an early age okay so uh, now how do we define an early age what is like too early or what is the early time um, there there are two aspects to it one is a biological aspect so you when you say early marriage so uh, or or marrying on the right time if the, if you ask about the right time so um, biologically a child is prepared for marriage when he or she hits puberty you know when they are mature biologically but then there are other aspects to it which is you need to be psychologically also mature enough so it's just the biological maturity is not enough you need to be psychologically mature enough to um, be in a marriage okay so uh, but then uh, you all of you agree to this right you, you have to be uh, on on a psychological maturity but then uh, when we talk about maturity you would find a 18 year old girl sometimes more mature than even a 30 year old girl right so even maturity uh, you cannot define what is the the line for maturity because things things you, uh, people get you know, get mature by learning through experiences also so so th there are there are things in your life that happen that that make you even more mature day by day and and you can never uh, reach the maximum maturity unless and until you experience things so there might things there might happen things so obviously you cannot define a, a a point for an early age but the the earlier the better obviously the earlier the better and again if you have uh, legal ages in your countries and on the places that you live we need to follow that uh, recently in india um, the legal age has been increased uh, how many of you know it what was it pre previously and it has yeah so basically 21 is for the girls now i think so for the boys also previously it was 18 18 for girls and it has gone to 21 boys was 21 and uh, let me tell you uh, in even in the other countries uh, if you go to, for us you has us uh, each state has its own uh, legal age for marriage and then even in those countries if if somebody wants to get married before that age 
they can do so with the consent of their parents if the parents say it's okay they can get married before but the alarming uh, thing and the irony to this is to have a illegal relationship or a sexual relationship before marriage and the uh, to have a uh, consent for that that age is way below the the marry, marrying age the, uh, you understood my point to have an illegal relationship or having a consent for an illegal relationship you know uh, so that age is way below this so we, uh, our society is actually allowing those things allowing the illegal and wrong things and the haram things to happen and something which is halal has been pushed from 18 to 21 how how come 18 is like you know it it is a choice it is not that everyone 18 has to get married and the if a person is see and then somebody gave a very good uh, justification if a person is um, mature enough to know who the president of the country or the prime minister of the country should be can't he think for himself or herself to get married so you find the person mature enough for such big decisions but not for the decision of his life so all of this is just pushing our society towards uh, immorality because uh, see these sexual de- desires are something which have been put in a person allah subhanahu wa taala has put it in a person so if you don't get halal obviously you would go towards haram so the, these are the challenges but uh, we need to take care of and uh, why am i stressing on the early marriage thing obviously when uh, when a proposal might come and your parents bring it to you or you find somebody or whatever the case is um, we should not consciously ourselves try to delay the marriage okay now girls uh, genuinely what are the reasons that you why why do we don't want to get married early any genuine reasons like if somebody education exactly yes college yes very good, very very good and uh, genuine questions who has uh, actually our society has molded us into a um, into a structure where they say that you cannot get education or you cannot get college after marriage so you know if if everyone uh, and and even if this is at the stake of a boy or a girl falling onto the wrong things uh, do you get my point even if you know so i, I being a parent i'm ready ki main apni beti ki shaadi nahi karungi because you know she has to get um, educated even if she might fall into trap of shaitan she might fall into something illegal but then no uh, you know uh, that is more important and then i being a parent mere ghar mein bahu aa rahi hai and you know i want to get a bahu which is like very religious and all of that and i want to follow the sunnah of rasul sallam but then i do not allow her to proceed her education no there should be a system in a in our islamic society where boys and girls could get married on a proper age and even continue their uh, education uh, and looking at the responsibilities yes very good um, uh, and he says that uh, there are a lot of responsibilities again uh, we need to define very clearly what are the responsibilities that that uh, that are placed on a man and what are, what are the responsibilities that are placed on a woman so all of the financial responsibilities <coughs> all of the financial responsibilities goes to the uh, husband and the woman is not required to work she may if she wants out of will if she is doing her part and she has ample time then she can do that <clears throat> so yes uh, i i agree to your points uh, but then i tell you this is what our society has told us society keeps on changing the society that told that 18 is fine now is saying 21 is fine so do we keep on changing our um, our values according to what the society is telling us we if we do keep you know if we keep on doing this there would be no end to this so we need to change the mindset of the society uh, and uh, understand and, and another thing responsibilities yes very very good responsibilities it seems even the boys or the girls they feel that once they get married uh, that's it that's end of enjoyment and bas bojhi bojh hoga and it's all uh, work and no play 
no that's not the case it is a different kind of a, a life that you know so people think that you know that, that um, getting married is an end to my freedom no that that is a start to something very beautiful which you haven't experienced it might come with responsibilities it might come with a bit more of maturity it might come with uh, some other things that you could not do as a muslima you can gain so much of ajr and good uh, uh, you know uh, janna just by performing a few things so subhanallah it's a very huge and uh, long discussion which i feel that uh, time wouldn't permit but uh, what i would want all of you to realize that Uh, since rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that uh, uh, you know we need to get people married early so girls okay so girls are getting uh, you know uh, they they feel ki hamari education ho jaye you know maybe it's 24 25 whatever it is and then boys ko kya hota hai hum ye kar le aur wo kar le wo kar le and then unless or until i i i get settled in my life so you know the, the boy reaches even 28 29 30 and is still searching for a job और जब तक वो नहीं होगा तो आई वुडेंट गेट मैरिड इज इन दिस वॉट इज है सो हाउ डू यू एक्सपेक्ट कि इतने लंबा अरसे तक यू नो अंटिल दिस एज दैट यू रीच टू प्रोटेक्ट योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम दी फ्रॉम दी विस्पर्स ऑफ द शैतान फ्रॉम दी एनी एनी काइंड ऑफ इलीगल रिलेशनशिप इट्स 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 अ स्ट्रगल इट्स अ स्ट्रगल so subhanallah we uh, we need to take care of not falling in the traps of shaitan and uh, if there is a, a proposal from somewhere whatever it is try to uh, consult people try to know try to consult allah subhanahu wa taala through istikhara and uh, try not to delay marriages we shouldn't delay it for any uh, you know for just small reasons you you could set up a, a, a demand with the people that we are getting married that i need to continue my education so and so much this and this much and try to do our best also so i hope this part is clear so subhanallah allah subhanahu wa taala uh, has ordained uh, for for people to get married in surah an nur also rasul uh, allah subhanahu wa taala says that uh, get the those who are not married in your society to get married why because it protects the society from evil from the bad things that are happening and everything has been normalized so much and so much that you know uh, we do not even find anything wrong and now the limit has crossed to if you if you go to uh, if you have heard in the news and things that are happening even in india that now our muslim girls are getting married to non muslims all of this all of this so you know uh, we could think are ye kaise ho sakta hai you know how how could a girl born in a muslim family gets married to a non muslim it's not halal it's haram and you know all of this uh but once a person prioritizes duniya over deen duniya over akhira duniya over janna all of this becomes easier so everything and anything that is in my heart um i need to check whether is it is it okay with allah subhanahu wa taala so if it is okay with my creator if it's fine then it's okay if it is not then that thing has to go you know we need to leave it if it's not a halal relationship it could be anything uh, that is not halal i need to uh, leave it and sacrifice it for allah subhanahu wa taala uh, we have done the, uh, this topic quite quite a bit in general interaction um, so inshallah taala uh, may allah subhanahu wa taala make this point a uh, very because see any any um, decision that a person takes in his life after becoming a muslim like you know if for a person who is is a non muslim and 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 becomes a muslim the ma- the, the one major decision in his life is marriage this is the this is the number one decision that a person has to take in his life uh, which is the biggest decision of his life is marriage right uh, but then we need uh, in our major decisions we need to trust allah subhanahu wa taala and believe in him and know that what he does is the best for us So, subhanallah uh, may allah subhanahu wa taala protect all of us from the fitna of shaitan protect all of us from all the waswasas of uh, shaitan and our society and the society that we live in and uh, may he keep us as pure diamonds inshallah taala and then may he help us to find uh, good spouses who might be not as handsome as the latest he- hero that we know but would be beautiful in the heart beautiful in the inside 
And then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us the sabr and patience to even look ahead of those uh, imperfections. So there might be a lot of imperfections. Now that is why the Quran says that you know fa'fu uh, was fahu. That this is this is the uh, this is the example that has been given given to us. This is advice that Allah gives us in a family relationship that you forgive them, try, just just uh, neg you know neglect those things what what you do not like. And and even in the hadith we come to know uh, about Rasulullah sir, when somebody came talking about the wife said uh, you know there are so many things that that you don't dislike but there might be things that you you actually like about the woman so we concentrate more on the positives and the negative and you're never going to get a ideal and perfect husband and a fam perfect family there has to be <coughs> some compromises and some things that you have to take ahead inshallah. <coughs> There were a few questions which I would like to. <coughs> Just <coughs> Just a minute. Uh, a few questions that the girls had given. Um. One question is, when do you know it is the right person? No? When do you know it is the right person? <laughs> it's a very important question. <coughs> we will actually never know uh, whether it is the right person. We, we, we might have to just uh, have an approximate calculation of things. We will try to... <clears throat> have the uh, best assessment that we can do according to the parameters that Rasulullah has given us. Again, <clears throat> what are the parameters? As we said, you look at the deen and, and the other things also. If you find the other things, you can just keep it adding on it. But then you look at the deen and the akhlaq of the person. How, it, how is the person? Is, is, is he a, a responsible person? That's it. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to uh, make any person right for you okay so <clears throat> uh, you you might uh, meet a person you do not know obviously but then if you have the basics then trust allah SWT and go ahead for it and inshallah allah will make it right and let me tell you for a marriage to work it is not that the person in front of you is right there are things that both of them need to work ahead to make the marriage right so it's not that the person is perfect in front of you, then your life will be good. No, it is a daily struggle. You, you will have to do some things and the, the person in the front has to do some things and then you have a perfect marriage. So you do not focus on the, just the right person, but just to have your marriage uh, go in the right direction. Another question is, <clears throat> I'm not sure if, uh, okay, there was a question, but I couldn't, um, it's a long one. <clears throat> somebody says that um, somebody knows a person and is kind of a friend to to her and uh, uh, due to some ac academic works uh, they're helping each other and uh, she realizes that he is a misunderstood guy um, as like the other classmates talk about him and like he being a failure and all of this but uh, she feels that there is a there is a good good side to him and uh, he is good in studies also and uh, he is rude in nature because he has faced uh, many things in life. So, <clears throat> and she feels that he he's so positive even after hard work, meaning all of this, meaning that she has a very good impression about the person and is a good friend to, um, oh, oh, to her. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, uh, know very well that uh, shaitan has very beautiful ways to enter in our lives okay and to to drag us to towards the hellfire he has put things into very beautiful perspectives never ever ever does shaitan come to us saying that do this this is haram or do this this will lead you to hellfire or do this this will burn you in hellfire no never ever it always brings things to you um, beautifying it 
and that is the reason why according to the hadith uh, and its explanation we get to know that uh, jannah the, the path to jannah has been uh, is filled with thorns and pricky bushes and uh, the the path to hell is a very beautiful one all all with flowers and you know a very rose, rosy one what does this mean it is very beautified to go to hell fire it's very easy so now let me tell you um, shaitan uh, gets you into illegal things or haram things not just on the first day it is a very gradual thing so now he says now nah, the the boy is a very good person see there could be many ways to <coughs> if you genuinely genuinely trying to help out the person there could be many ways to help out the person rather than yourself being involved in uh, in uh, with the person okay and uh, any discussion any dialogue that happens between a man and a woman <coughs> alone again know it that that is the third one is shaitan so that is a haram relationship there uh, i just forgot to mention a point that uh, everything that i had said before marriage it's not allowed um to get married obviously once you are committed that okay you want to get married to somebody it is very much allowed for the boy and the girl to talk to each other to know about each other you know as you said that uh, can we know how can we know that the person is right so you can talk to each other you can know each other but in the presence of your mahram or a person uh, from your family who could be there Uh, so never even even if you are you intended to getting married to somebody uh, you still do not have the um, authority <coughs> legally to talk to the person in seclusion to uh, in alone be, being alone with the person okay so i i just um, what i would like to tell you is or i would suggest is that uh, try to be even if you're talking to the person uh, make sure uh if you, if if it's something out of need and and you feel you are the only person um that can help i don't think so that might be the case if you try to have uh, look look for another way other ways uh maybe through somebody you know or somebody or maybe the teacher or someone uh, who could help the person if you find ways allah subhanahu wa taala will open ways for you and uh better to uh, get away from such relationships <clears throat> i have many inhibitions towards marriage how do i overcome that uh, to overcome that i think so you need to uh, talk to somebody um, uh, who who you feel is mature enough and i wouldn't uh, recommend and then girls uh, i would tell you one thing um, for any such suggestions please do not uh, research the google and try to get answers from there because what is there is not actual what whatever you have from your elders and from the people in your family and people who you trust or your sheikhs or maybe some some uh, religious teachers you know that would be something which is genuine information and i i i tell you there are so many marriages that are breaking up just because of the concept that you, that people have of marriage in their mind is not what what is reality anything that you look at the films and anything that you see on on uh, uh media is not what is actually marriages <clears throat> and once people don't find that in their marriages they are breaking up people are not satisfied in their marriages so you know for any suggestions so, uh, i would recommend any inhibitions toward marriage anything that you feel <clears throat> that um, uh regarding marriage you need to talk to someone and someone meaning uh, somebody uh, elder than you if it's your parents you're comfortable with then well and good if it's some teacher of yours or some religious personality you can talk to them and clear out each and every point and only then we come to know what is the source so inshallah even we are there if you need to talk somebody needs to needs to talk inshallah we can do that <clears throat> what if i'm interested in uh, somebody is interested in somebody and and he, and uh i like him um and he doesn't know that and i i am aware of his feelings and we just talk as friends so what is to be done should i be clear with him and express or just let it be as friends okay <clears throat> so what do you want to express if it is that you want to get married to the person uh so the best channel is go to your parents and tell them that you want to get married to this person that is the only expression that that he can do obviously so even if <clears throat> so you know even if you tell the boy that uh, i want to get married to you uh expressing that i love you 
uh, th th that is not uh, not at all needed and uh, must not be done because in islam uh, just for for love the only halal uh, relation that can be there is marriage is nikah so if you know that you will be able to get married you to, uh, you know what are the sources what are the channels it is just through your parents obviously and another thing any nikah that is done without the consent of the parents like you know if if you are a girl and your <clears throat> father does not agree to your marriage it is not valid in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala for any reason they, they are rejecting it doesn't matter you cannot get married but duniya kya bata rahi hai hame kitni kahaniyan aisi hain wo bhag ke kar liya unhone shaadi and you know they succeeded and you know so and so and then people say okay, why can't you accept you know why parents can't accept that is not a question why they can or why they aren't again i said this world is not a place to have all of our desires fulfilled isn't it and when we try to uh, sacrifice something for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala allah subhanahu wa taala replaces it with, with something which is even more beautiful i don't say that even more beautiful would be must be a better girl or a better boy no that could also happen allah subhanahu wa taala would give you a marriage which would be um, a source of peace for you or and and you know better meaning allah would give you his love you obey you are obeying him he would bring you you closer to him so, subhanallah um wo, uh, when you when somebody is asking me that should i be clear with him and express or just let it be as it is as friends so see uh, another another uh, uh was was of shaitan or uh, you what do you call uh, another uh, jal hai na shaitan ka jal jo hai wo kya hai yahan par he is saying you can be just friends okay there is nothing as just friends in islam so you know in, if you feel ki boys are interested in girls just for friends that that is actually not the reality they are always looking for an opportunity so uh, for for anything that is illegal in the in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala not at the not not at the norms of the society that we live in for a society that we live in everything is normal it's fine to be friends but islamically you can't be just friends with the opposite, opposite gender interacting is another thing being friends and being like you know uh, uh, sharing your secrets sharing with them your things that is not not right because you do not know what step might lead to the next step and to the next step and to the next step and then you will regret because because you can't get married obviously and and when we open such doors and that is the reason why uh, uh, inter religious marriages are happening and things are happening around the world uh, i would just advise everyone uh, and, and another thing <clears throat> if you have if you are experiencing something or if you are going through something which is uh, conflicting islam okay uh, it is better to clarify with someone talk to someone rather than living with the guilt that i am doing something wrong and islam to ye bol raha hai aur mujhe i can't leave this so you know, just leave it jo hai wo karte raho it's fine it is better to talk to someone Who, who is wise enough and uh, will will guide you will show you the way to how to get off uh, get out of such things or uh, you know maybe maybe guide you to what is right and wrong inshallah taala in at the end of the day uh, we all have to face allah subhanahu wa taala at the end of the day we are going to be accounted for every word that we have said for everything that we have seen for everything that we hear for every action that we do and we are in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala he is watching over us and um this this is something we have to be always so all of our questions and all of our things usually might boil down to something very low if we have belief in allah subhanahu wa taala and we believe that there is a world that we have to go to inshallah taala after this this life inshallah uh, and i know there are many questions and i would still recommend all of you if you have any questions regarding the topic that we have done today after after the discussion that we have done today please do send those again uh just write uh, from uh, on you could you could go on the same question link that was posted and uh, put your questions again inshallah we will try to discuss it inshallah taala so may allah subhanahu wa taala help us out uh, with all of uh, our decisions in our lives inshallah taala may allah subhanahu wa taala make it easy for our parents and for us also to find the best uh, partners in our life inshallah taala who would 
take us towards janna you know subhanallah how how beautiful it would be if you if you're marrying somebody for this dunya you know he might make your life uh, 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 the life of a princess of a fairy tale but then after this life so wouldn't i want my spouse or my husband <clears throat> to be with me in janna to roam around in janna so inshallah taala uh, may allah subhanahu wa taala make us amongst those uh, i would like to end the today's session subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah